when you shit it goes into a little box and it stays there and it fills up <laughs> and, you, and then what you've got to do is like every couple of months you've got to drive it around and pump it out and <laughs> part of the reason why um, I find it so stressful <laughs> Good morning. How are you doing? I dreamt about Hitler's watch just now. Like just before I woke up, I was in a shop or a, or a museum or something or a cave, cave maybe. And uh, there was a. It was a watch that belonged to Hitler on the wall, and I remember thinking, guy had good taste. <laughs> good watch. Tea for you. Um... I love you to bring this weekend's gonna be insane. It's gonna be non stop. Oh, I'm so tired. Last night, Daisy and I went to a theater show, and she cried a lot. You did. And then we went to a housewarming party for her friend who happens to be a prince. No big deal, we stayed out maybe a little bit too late. She ended up sleeping on the couch. But that's all good because we have to go to a meeting together for this theatre project that we're working on. And then if that wasn't enough, afterwards, I'm going to meet Gio to watch him play Quidditch. Yes. The sport from Harry Potter. And then tomorrow is Sunday and Alex and John are getting married. Oh, and it's going to be a joyous, beautiful occasion. And I will probably be out again very late. <sighs> Not a young man anymore, Future Bing. I can't do this in such high frequency. We both look very rough. I've looked rough this entire project so far. <laughs> I'm having the the booziest, like lack of sleepiest January I've had in years. Me too, actually. A mess, and I can, I can see it on the screen. <laughs> I get all the worse, I get all the worse, I get very tired. It's good. It's just like, where are my eyes going? In my face, but I don't know where. They've sunk away somewhere, they're <laughs> hiding. They don't want to see. You should either get little, little like, support apparatus, or some little cucumbers, just to, like, refresh. Refresh and replenish. Bob. That's the most exciting thing about this whole thing, this whole process, is I get to use my theme music again. <laughs> There's music that is only ever used in PBFB. Yeah. We're relocating to the boat because it was too loud in the coffee shop. Thank you much. Hey MTV, welcome to my crib. <laughs> I rushed into it. It's the best thing I can, it's the best way I can explain it. I was thinking about moving to London and my parents were like, oh, we always thought we were going to pay for your university, but then you got a loan, so we have this money and we want to set you up in life. And I was like, that's really brilliant, thank you so much. And then we started looking to see if they could put deposits on flats. We were like, it's not nearly that much money that they, that they had. And then we were on like Zoopla or something and my mum saw um, a boat and she turns around to me and just says, I don't think this is a completely stupid idea. <laughs> What the hell is Christmas tea? I'm not sure, but you can try it. I'll have some Christmas tea. They're both like Christmassy flavours. This is yeah. odd. So then we start this cascade of looking at boats. But I think the biggest problem I made was that when I was looking at boats, I was mostly looking at Pinterest. I wasn't looking on like boater forums where you hear about all the problems. I was looking at, oh my gosh, it's so cute. Like with all these like things hanging from the ceiling and everything's turning into other things and George Clark's amazing spaces. Um, and so I kind of like got swept away with the dream of it. And also, 
I have to be 100% honest, I did not think my parents would go through with it. And so it kind of got to like April of last year and we'd like viewed some boats and my dad was like bizarrely invested. He's like, I love it, I think this is brilliant. James, this is exactly the thing for you. Um, and I'm like, yeah, 100%, this is brilliant. And then all of a sudden I, I own this enormous boat that has so many like secret problems I didn't know about. That also has a catastrophically like high mooring fee. So that's basically like renting the space of the water where my where my boat lives. When you shit, it goes into a little box and it stays there and it fills up. <laughs> and, you, and then all you gotta do is like every couple of months, you gotta drive it round and pump it out. And <laughs> part of the reason why um, I find it so stressful. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Um, and on the very first time I drove it, I got someone to help me on the way, but then he was like, I think you can drive it on the way back. And I was like, sure. It's like tiny days at the back of this enormous boat trying to drive it. And I ended up like crashing into a whole load of other, other narrow boats, which generally is okay, because they've got steel hulls, so they're all like quite sturdy. The a boat opposite me um, is like a fiberglass kind of more like speedboat style. And if my boat hit their boat, that's their boat, like, gone. So I find it a very stressful place to live. Also, when the tank is full, um, it lists, which means it goes like this. And so I live on, like, a two-degree angle most most of the time. <laughs> it's Christmassy. Oh, fuck yeah, I'll have that's that. That's mould as fuck. Let that me, is... um, let me Christmas tea. Mould to shit. Oh, it smells, it smells like presents and disappointment and family <laughs> arguments. <laughs> Hard getting out of that boat. Good. So much colder in there than out here. Yeah. <laughs> How does that work? <laughs> you don't understand the physics. Bye, Daisy. Bye. Nice yeah. Station? Station, let's go. I gotta go watch some Quidditch. Lewis is telling me about his new alphabet <laughs> because the English alphabet is in, is wrong and it doesn't fit the language. It's not fit for, and look, for things like if you look here, like. PH does not make there's not an, a f sound make, right? No. So I've just made it a character. And same with same with GH in, in Russian you have these softeners. Like a yeah. little symbol for softening things. So in every word with a GH in it in English, it softens the sounds of four, like through. Yeah. So the GH just stands for a softener that would make an O and a U softer, hence they make an U sound instead. Yeah. So I've actually started like using it as well. The notes from today. I was wondering, I was watching, I was like, why is he doing that? Yeah, I was watching you write. And I've, I've, also, I've also created cursive forms of the letters as well. So you can learn handwriting for it. So that's a th. It's old, an old English runic thorn. So it's a th sound. And just like in old English, you have a th. So that's a th. And that's a, um, that's a ch. That's a th. And where's the sh? There's a sh. So there's, to represent all the sounds in English you don't have a character for. Because like, words like by, phonetically, or like visually, would just be bje. How realistically, what would it take to get this into popular circulation? Not much, I don't think. I think having taught it, and I've actually got people at like at, at uni to start using it <laughs> because it makes more visual. I, I also text in it because most of the characters already exist. So Shit. all the text I send, and like actually, it is not difficult to like switch your brain over from one to the other because it is a more phonetic alphabet. <laughs> Beautiful weather for it. I'm sitting here. Standing. I'm standing here. <laughs> I'm standing here trying to understand what the hell is going on. Explain Quidditch to me. Quidditch is made up of two teams actively playing on the same field. There are six players per team up until the snitch comes on, which happens at 17 minutes. And then each team releases a seeker at 18 minutes. You want to score more points than anyone else? Uh huh. So you've got two different types of positions. You've got the chasers yeah. with the yellow headbands, uh -huh. and then you've got the beaters with the black headbands. The six players on the team are comprised of two beaters who wear black headbands, one keeper who's wearing a green headband, and three chasers who are wearing white headbands. So the match will last until the snitch is caught. So that can be 18 minutes or it can be 45 minutes. And you have rolling subs, so if you're tired, you can come off. 
if you're not tired anymore, you can go back on. It can be a very long and physical game. The quaffle, which is the wooden ball in Harry Potter, is actually replaced by a deflated volleyball, which makes it easier to hold. And the aim of the game is to get the volleyball through the hoops. Um, and that scores you 10 points. When you catch a snitch, it ends the game automatically and it scores you 30 points, 30 points only. If you're losing by more than 30 points, obviously you don't want to catch the snitch because then you lose the game overall, even if you caught the snitch. So you play defensively and it's a very tactical game of trying to score when they've got no beaters, um, take all the opportunities you can while also having control of the quaffle so they can't score effectively. Coffee tequila is okay though, right? Like, it doesn't count as coffee. Yeah. If it's tequila. I'm white. I'm white.